Welcome to episode five of the Momxiety Club podcast. On today's episode, I'll be covering the differences between mom guilt and shame and how to address them both. Welcome to the Momxiety Club. I'm your host, Tori Levine, a former mental health worker with degrees in psychology and criminal justice. So I know the importance of keeping calm in a difficult situation. But when I had my kids, I found myself full of anxiety, constantly questioning if I was doing things right or how I was messing up my kids now. One day, everything clicked and I made a commitment to own my anxiety so it doesn't own me. And that's why I started the Momxiety Club podcast. Each week, we'll discuss all things motherhood. So join me and let's get rid of this momxiety together. Hi, my name is Tori Levine and welcome to the Momxiety Club podcast. First, I would like to thank you for listening and supporting the podcast. This is a big passion project of mine and every mom that this podcast reaches makes my heart happy. Please remember to make sure you hit subscribe in your podcast app, as well as follow us on social media and share the podcast with another new mom in your life. Last week, I spoke with Alex Frost, a writer who has three boys under the age of five, about an article she wrote on mom guilt for Healthline. We didn't have a chance to really dive deeply into the difference between mom shame and mom guilt, Um, but that's what we're going to talk about today. So here's a little tidbit of info from my research. More often, we are calling our feelings of shame mom guilt, which often causes moms, especially isolated new moms, to feel worse and like they are not good enough and never can be. So let's change that. Here's a little bit of my story to lead us into this topic. This past week, actually a week ago today, my best friend from high school had her second child. And talking with her and then looking back at pictures of when my second son, Eli, was a newborn, brought up so many feelings of inadequacy, failure, and grief. And they just came right back to me. What was the scariest of all of those feelings was that I had not realized how far into postpartum anxiety I had gone. If I could go back and tell myself to seek help much earlier, I would. I didn't recognize the anxiety because with my first son, I was constantly worried about every little thing. Was he getting enough milk? Was he going to roll over in bed at night? Was he going to have secondary drowning after swim class or from water in the bath? Was he eating the right things? And on and on and on. Since I didn't have those similar worries, I thought I was in the clear this time around. I even remember telling my general practitioner that I wasn't anxious this time, which is pretty laughable when I look back at it. I didn't realize or acknowledge that postpartum anxiety could be manifesting itself in feelings of failure, lack of feeling connected to the baby, feelings of anger and rage, and feeling like my family would be better off without me because I was just adding to the people my husband had to take care of since a lot of the times I felt like I couldn't even take care of myself. It started as mom guilt that I wasn't able to do all the fun activities with my older son and have that one-on-one time that we were used to for four and a half years. As the baby got older, the guilt kept piling on and eventually turned to shame. I felt like if I was spending any time with the baby, that I was being a terrible mom to my older son. Then I felt like if I was not giving my baby enough mental stimulation, and this is all compared to what I had done with my first son, that when the baby got older, he would (laughs) flunk out of kindergarten or we wouldn't have a strong connection and bond like I did with my oldest. I felt like being A good parent to one child meant I was being a bad parent to the other. I would get scared because I thought to myself many, many times that we never should have had a second child because I was incapable of being a good mom to either of them now. So did you hear anything in that last part of my story that sounds like you? Did you hear where feelings of guilt quickly turned into feelings of shame and inadequacy? The terms guilt and shame are often used interchangeably. But the short and simple of it is that guilt is something we feel when we've acted against our values or beliefs, and it relates to others. Shame relates to our feelings about ourselves, and it's a deeply held belief regarding our own self-worth. 
I did a lot of research uh, in different scholarly articles that I will link to in the show notes, but for simplicity's sake, I am going to mostly just reference uh, the discussion of guilt and shame in Dare to Lead by Brene Brown because she puts things into much simpler and easier to understand terms. So in her book, Dare to Lead, Brene Brown states, and I quote, I believe that guilt is adaptive and helpful. It's holding something we've done or failed to do up against our values and feeling psychological discomfort. I define shame as the intensely painful feeling or experience of believing that we are flawed and therefore unworthy of love and belonging. I don't believe shame is helpful or productive. In fact, I think shame is much more likely to be the source of destructive, hurtful behavior than a cure. Brene Brown defines guilt as, I did something bad, and shame as, I am bad. So in this example from my life, I felt guilty that I did or didn't do something, like spend every waking second 100% focused on one child. But I felt shame when I started believing that I was a bad mom and my kids would be better off if something happened to me. Brene Brown goes on to state that shame is a fear of disconnection. Shame gets its power from being unspoken because we're fearful of talking about what we're feeling, that it can hurt just like physical pain. And in order to overcome shame, we have to talk about it just like we would talk about, talk to our doctor or physical therapist about a physical pain that we're having. They need to know the description of it in order for us to get better. In the same way, we need to talk about shame so that we can move past it. Shame has been found to be highly correlated with depression, bullying, sometimes eating disorders, but actually guilt is not correlated with those things. Are you finding yourself being hypercritical? Are you criticizing your significant other for not doing something she or he didn't know how to do? Do you feel the need to apologize? If so, then that is a sign that you are mostly feeling guilt. But if you're just feeling anger and resentment and feeling like there's no reason for you to apologize, you've probably ventured into the realm of shame. Shame makes us think that we can't do better. So why would we apologize if this is how we are? So having some understanding between the differences in guilt and shame, are you mom shaming yourself? I know I was. Is there one thing that triggers your mom guilt that can lead to a downward spiral of negativity, anger, and feelings of failure and unworthiness? Because sometimes it can start out as something you feel guilty about. But when you go down that downward spiral and are have a negative self-talk that you are not good enough, that is shame. How can we move past this to alleviate these feelings, to know that we are worthy of that love and belonging that Brene Brown discussed, and to know our own self-worth? Here are a few steps about identifying our feelings of shame and working through them. One of the easiest but also hardest things to do to change our feelings of shame is to change our self-talk. Shame is fed by a negative self-talk and our fear of discussing our real feelings with others. We need to simply take that one step to change our self-talk. Would you tell your best friend that her family's better off without her? No. Would you tell a friend that she's failing at mothering? No. So why are you telling yourself that? It can be difficult to change the way we self-talk. It won't happen after one instance. It's something we have to work on. When we talk to ourselves, it's primarily handled by our subconscious, which processes 99% of the information in our brains. So it can make you uncomfortable at first. You may feel silly, but taking one small step to recognize that you are not being kind to yourself in a moment Going rewind and adjusting your self-talk is the first step, small step, in the right direction. So some ideas for these things are to put up inspirational quotes around your home. I've printed off some and hung them at different places. Uh, have little triggers on your phone to have an inspirational text message throughout the day. These are some of the things that we do in the Mom Anxiety Club membership. 
Also, if you go to MomsietyClub.com episode 5 or the links in any of our social media, you'll find uh, access to some free resources, free downloads of these positive quotes that you can just print out and hang up around your house. I have heard people will write notes to themselves on their bathroom mirror. So the first thing they do when they get up is see a positive note. Do you notice a particular place in your house, in your life where you are particularly negative? You can print out some of these inspirational quotes that I've made up that are nice and pretty to have around your house. Again, you can get those at momsietyclub.com or in the show notes listed below uh, and put them where you have these negative thoughts. If it's maybe because you're stuck rocking the baby to nap for an hour, stick one up on the baby's wall to just look at and say, I'm doing a good job. Next, start speaking openly with a friend, family member in a mom support group like the Momsiety Club membership about your feelings and fears. Share your truth and listen to other moms who share theirs. In Dare to Lead, Brene Brown writes that giving people permission to talk about shame is liberating. It normalizes shame, creates connection, and builds trust. So do you need that permission? I am granting you that permission to talk about shame. Talk to another mom, your best friend, your neighbor, your spouse about what you are feeling. You may not know that they had no idea you were feeling this way. You may not know that they are feeling the same way. This is one of the reasons that the Momsiety Club membership was formed. So there is a safe place where we can speak our truths, talk about any guilt and shame we're feeling, and know that we are doing a great job for our kids. It's just hard. Shame can become shame because we're feeling like others are going to judge us if we share what we are feeling. The ideal Picture perfect Instagram and social media posts. The celebrity who is in her pre pregnancy clothes the day after she comes back from having a baby. These are all promoting unrealistic ideals of what we should be and promoting that if we are not like them, we are going to be judged as bad. Instead of liking and commenting on the next unrealistic post you see, like, comment, and support the mom who is being real and honest. Share your moment you felt alone and like the world was a mess. Share the pile of laundry. Share the dishes stacked in the sink. Share that you are hiding in the bathroom for five minutes. I shared a lot of these in um, Momsiety Club Quarantine Chronicles, on which you can find on Instagram. And I share a lot of these, as do a lot of our, our Mom's ID Club members in the membership. If you're going to share something on social media, tag us so we can share in your honest moments. And I do just want to mention if this is something you don't feel comfortable talking to anyone in your life about, you can go and you can find me and talk to me. Talk to me on social media at Mom's ID Club or can schedule a mom's eye event session where you are safe to just tell your truth and get it off your chest because a lot of the times we don't need somebody to fix our problems. We just need somebody to listen. All right, next, learn your triggers so that you can begin to start catching yourself before you are at the bottom of that downward spiral of shame. Here are a few things that I do and what some other listeners and moms have said that they do when they're feeling like they're spiraling downward. I think for me, the number one thing is to move. And mommy bar classes really helped me and really still continually helps me. I absolutely look forward to Wednesdays when I get to teach live online the other moms and we get to work out with or without their baby along. Today, actually, one of the toddlers was participating in class, and that was a lot of fun. But I digress. Dance, jump, run, exercise, lift weights. It's a great way to distract our minds and also give our brains a nice boost of the endorphins, which uh, are the neurotransmitters that and chemical messengers that help relieve pain and stress. And exercise also can boost dopamine 
norepinephrine, and serotonin, which play an important part in regulating mood. Schedule, if you're feeling like you need to have one-on-one time with a child, schedule that. I just did something with my son for the first time in a long time, my oldest son, for the first time in a long time. We got to go run errands together. It was just sitting in the car, driving, picking up things at curbside pickup. We were right next to one of our old favorite ice cream places that he loves. And we went, grabbed it, and then ate outside. And it was wonderful just to have that one-on-one time to talk with him and, and connect. Is one of your triggers social media or being on your phone or your significant other being on their phone? Create a screen-free environment like the dinner table at bedtime, an hour in the afternoon. These can all help reduce stress associated with smartphones and really creates that quality time over quantity of time that we're spending with our children. It can be hard with screens. My husband and I just had this conversation the other night and I said, I can't stand these screens because they suck us in and we think we're going to do something for two seconds and it's 20 minutes later. We committed to making some screen-free, phone-free zones in our home. If this is something you've done, uh, please share your experiences. And a lot of the times, self-care is this huge push for moms. But in all honesty, it can be impossible to find time for self-care. We don't need to have a spa moment. A lot of the times that can feel Like we're adding on another failure in our day if we don't get to achieve that self-care assignment for ourselves. So one small step that I've taken, and I know a lot of other moms have taken and we're working on in the Momsiety Club, is taking one small step by saying no to something that you, that would cause you stress or that you don't want to do, that's not necessary. Say no to being on a family Zoom call if it makes the kids go crazy. Say no to a family dinner invitation if it's going to mess up the kids' schedule and your schedule and make your night more hectic. Say no to scheduling all the appointments for your family. Ask your spouse to take over one thing. Say no to making dinner and order out. I can't really say no to snuggling uh, before bedtime, but I do say no to snuggling and ending up sleeping in bed all night. I will set a limit and say I will ha- I will snuggle for five minutes and then I need to go downstairs and have some mommy time. So is that something that you're able to do? And finally, if you're unable to get yourself out of that negative self-talk, seek assistance. Ask your insurance provider where you could seek a qualified therapist, talk to your OBGYN, talk to your general practitioner if you do not have a counselor or therapist to speak to. In the show notes, I'm going to add the phone numbers for the Postpartum Stress Institute. They have a helpline and a text line. So if you don't have anyone you know that you can reach out to immediately, you can call them and they can assist you finding someone in your area. Mom guilt can be helpful or unhelpful, but shame is always unhelpful. Let's work on using the right words so we can move on from mom shaming ourselves and having that be a normal thing that new moms face. It should not be normalized. As when it is, moms are not seeking the care and support that is needed and necessary. Mom thinks this is just a normal part of being a new mom. And especially during this pandemic, when new moms are even more isolated than usual, we need to share that these shameful feelings are not normal and feelings of not being good enough, unworthy, and failing are not normal. So we really need to stop calling the shame we're feeling mom guilt. Let's teach new moms that guilt can be helpful, but shame is not. And when shame becomes our primary voice in our heads, we need to drastically change our self-talk. And oftentimes this requires assistance from a trained professional. 
Do you feel inspired now to share your story on social media? Tag the Momsiety Club. It's at Momsiety Club so that we can thank you for sharing your story. So I hope this episode has helped you realize that there are some differences between guilt and shame, how we can move on past the downward spiral of negativity. If some of the things you're feeling like anger and resentment and rage, if they're creeping their way in, that it's time to reach out because you can find help. You can get better. Let's stop mom shaming ourselves. There's been this push to stop mom shaming on social media. But I think first, in order to recognize that we're shaming others, we have to realize and stop shaming ourselves. So your assignment this week is to figure out if you are feeling guilt or shame, share your story. So I'd love to check in with you next week. I'll uh, try to remember to share how our screen-free zones or times in our household are going. And I hope you share some of your goals. What are you going to do to help yourself take that small step forward? One of my favorite things is to hear from listeners about what they are doing for themselves, as well as what fun little things their little ones are up to. Did your little one just achieve a milestone? Did you get to take a walk by yourself this week, leave a voicemail and share your story at 717-461-2283. Or you can email a voicemail to hello at momsietyclub.com. You might just hear your story featured on a future episode. All right, mama. Thank you for listening. Remember to subscribe so you can get the next episode straight to your phone. And if you would, if this spoke to you, please go on to Apple Podcasts and rate and review the podcast. Reviews really help tell all the algorithms behind the podcast apps that this is a podcast that other people want to listen to as well. And that way more moms can hear and benefit from the Momsiety Club. All right. I look forward to connecting on social media and in the Momsiety Club. And let's go get rid of this Momsiety together. The Momsiety Club podcast is not intended to take the place of medical advice or therapy. If you are in crisis, call your local emergency number, 911, or the National Suicide Prevention Hotline at 1-800-273-TALK.